Hey guys, it's me, The Fanatic, and welcome to my draft video, uh, or analysis, sorry, of the NPCC Season 2. If you guys don't know what that is, I will leave a link to the Twitter below where you can keep up with all of the managers. Basically, it's a um, draft league, um, similar to the PPL in ways, different to PPL in other ways. Um, it's something I just fancy doing, sorry, just having fun, I'm like, hanging, I am got a cold and just all bunked up, so if, yeah, if I, if I fart, be proud. Um, basically, it's a draft league, well, just like the PPL, but a bit different, obviously, um, and I am, I decided to join this, um, this season, just to try and keep myself warmed up, you know, for next season of PPL, because last season, it started really, really well for me, you guys know, I was on like 6 and 2 at the or something, and I know I haven't uploaded the other battles, it's something I can do, um, probably this weekend actually, I have time now, um, but they didn't go too well, I lost the last three weeks, so I finished 6 and 5, much like season 2, I finished 6 and 5 as well, so, the season kind of petered out for me, there was every bit of chance that I could actually finish, you know, top, I mean, I was definitely the least likely out of the four people who were kind of up there, which was me, Trav, Sam, and, uh, Shardy, obviously, Trav never really looked like slowing down, his team was insane. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Basically, the main sort of reason why I wanted to join this league was to just kind of, you know, keep progressing. I'm definitely getting better as I play more draft league um, games. So, the more practice I can get, the better, basically. So, I decided that we'll join this league and we'll give it a go. And I really wanted to draft something a bit different to normal. And saying that, I've got two Pokemon that I used in the PPL last season. Uh, there were going to be a lot more that I've used before, but because of a couple of snipes and things that had to change. Anyway, I've waffled. Basically, what you can see in front of you is my 3DS. Um, we will just search the members in here. I figured it would be a nice graphic to have. Um, here you can see, I've literally clicked the search function. It's just going through all of the Pokemon. Um, I have got a full Pokedex, so the first team member um, of my team, oh and by the way I'm sticking with Norwich Skitty, um, as you can see along the top, well it's definitely not going to be any of these other than Manaphy, Manaphy was my round one pick, um, this little guy, Tiny Blue as I will call it, but I haven't figured out nicknames for everything by the way, so there won't be any nicknames on here unless I mention them. Um, Tiny Blue, the man of feet, was my tier one pick, my first round pick. Uh, I was third in the draft. I think the first other two mons that went were Mega Venusaur and Latias. Um, so I was pretty happy to get hold of this man of feet because there's a core that I wanted to try with man of feet for a while now. Um, PPL, I've never really had a favourable position to draft Manaphy. Um, I think last season I was third in the order, um, which is the closest to the front I've had. Um, I can't remember what I picked round one then either, but... Manaphy is really, really cool, as you guys know. Access to Tail Glow, Calm Mind, Heart Swap, uh, Rest Hydration with Rain Dance is cool. Obviously, Rain Dance boosts your Scald as well. Um, then it, I don't think it gets Hydro Pump. I don't even know, to be honest, um, because Scald is basically all you need on this thing. Then, obviously, with Tail Glow, um, to complement Tail Glow or Calm Mind, you have moves like Energy Ball, um, Pretty Trigger Signal Beam, Ice Beam. Um, Psychic, not sure about Shadow Ball, lots of things get Shadow Ball, it might, but I'm not entirely sure, but it gets enough of a variation of moveset where it's it's dangerous. Um, and you can even just bring Bulky, this thing is base 100 across the par uh, path, across the board, um, much like Mew, Celebi, Jirachi, um, it's a great mon. It also has access to, I mean it's perfectly viable to be a physical uh, mon as well, it gets Knock Off and U-Turn. Um, not sure about Waterfall, maybe, not entirely sure, um, but it, it has access to two great um, physical moves that are used in the meta, so in U-Turn and Knock Off, especially when um, my team, upon reflection, doesn't really have a reliable Knock Off user, which could be a big downfall, um, but not many NFE mons got drafted, so it's not too bad that I don't have too much of a Knock Off uh, presence, but... With Manaphy using it, you probably won't, I probably won't even bring it on Manaphy at all, because it's not the kind of thing Manaphy really does the best. Um, but with the team support I have for this thing, I don't even need to run Tail Glow. I can, I have Baton Pass options. Um, well, that, that's pretty much it. I have Baton Pass options, but Tail Glow on this thing, I've been I'm wanting to try for ages. Um, 
calm mind, bulky calm mind. This thing is really hard to kill unless you have like the best electric type in the game. Like the only thing that I know to pretty much truly counter this thing is Heliolisk, mainly because it's immune to water. Um, it's especially bulky. It can carry like toxic or something, but I mean you'll lose a one-on-one. -on -one. With Heliolisk, I'm sure there's plenty of others, any good, like Mega Venusaur, even then we get Psychic. We're not going to take Grass move, but we have Psychic, so. I mean, this thing's move ball is fantastic, base 100 across the board. Um, it's regarded as one of the best Pokemon in draft format for a reason. It's always a first round pick, someone normally takes it round one or round two alongside the Teeny. That's the only other thing I see people pick, because, you know, V-Create hurts a lot. Um, so... I'm really excited to try and use this thing. I'm sure there's lots I've missed out about this thing, but it's just so cute. I mean, just look at him. Um, I'm just really excited to use him, and obviously, with his weaknesses to grass and electric, um, I have built a core which covers Eco pretty much perfectly, um, and it really benefits. I mean, they work so well between the two. We'll get to that as I get to it, because I'm going to go through each Mon in the order that I drafted them. I'm going to try and remember as best as I can, off the top of my head, the order I drafted them. Um, which means you'll be seeing my Mega last, but I'm sure a lot of you can probably guess or already know what it is anyway. So, my round one pick was indeed Manaphy. So, on to round two. Um, I decided that I want to get some Bolt pretty quick, um, mainly because I, I needed some, and... The snipes, sorry by the way, I just like snorted. Um, a lot of my bolt got sniped uh, from my original draft plan, which um, wasn't too good. But this is one of the guys that I did manage to get. So I went straight in for another S tier. If, by the way, if you don't know, the MPCC drafting system uses the same price list and rules as the GBA. So I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with that. So I went straight in and got my, well not S tier, tier 1. Um, Mon, which is Skarmory. Uh, it's a defogger. It spikes uh, Stealth Rocks, Whirlwind. Um, it can even go offensive if you want to, or Totemize and Swords Dance and things like that. Overall, from using it in the PPL last season, I, I love this thing. Mainly because I had a ridiculously nice core of Mega Latios, Skarmory, and Florgis. Um, it just worked so well. Now, the core I have this time um, isn't anywhere near as good as that, but um, this thing's just so good. Oh, Roost as well, obviously. So I am a huge fan of drafting walls that can recover themselves and wish passing. Like, I, I really try to stick away from walls that can't recover themselves outside of leftovers or rest. Um, obviously, a few exceptions being Manaphy because, you know, you can wake up turn one because of rain, and rain also boosts water type moves, so it's a very viable move set. Um, same with maybe Gudra, because obviously it gets hydration rest as well. Otherwise, there isn't really much sort of. I, I really just don't like walls that can't heal themselves up. Um, saying that, I've got a couple, um, but I have got wish support, albeit not best wish support, I have some, um, but they're so bulky. Uh, I'm actually quite. I mean, they could change me, um, but we'll get to that at point, uh, later down the line. Scarborough is obviously a physical wall. Um, it can go specially defensive, it's probably not as frail as people might think. Obviously it gets a lovely ability and sturdy, so it can't be one hit KO'd. Um, unless obviously there's a multi-hit move, but I don't think there's a multi-hit move that in the game that probably can one-shot it. Um, yeah, it's just pretty good. It's not too slow for a bulky mon. Um, it might, does he get torn? I don't even know if he gets torn. I might be talking out my ass when it comes to saying it gets torn. It might, yeah, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, plenty of good offensive moves as well. Brave Bird. Personally, I prefer to use Drill Pet because it's a wall. I don't want to wear it down too much unless, you know, it's kind of necessary that I have to bring Brave Bird. Iron Head. Uh, Stone Edge. Or Rock Tide. I'm pretty sure I guess that. Rock Tomb is a nice move to run it because obviously you can have speed. Help your team out. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't get access to things like uh, Thunder Wave. It does get toxic, so it can stall people out if you want. Um, but... Otherwise, yeah, I'm just really happy that I managed to get this thing back. It's just a nice overall good wall that is well regarded in the draft format. Um, so I'm really happy that I got that. It's a shame that I didn't get the um, partnership that I wanted to go with it. But we'll get on to that later on. So, 
that was my round two pick. Now, round three, still not sniped at this point. Um, no, that's the... I don't want to do that. I, I, I've never really looked at the Pokédex before like this, so it, it's a bit weird. Um, round three, um, I really wanted to focus... I normally focus in the PPL on Dragon, Steel, Fairy Core. For this season, I really wanted to focus on... Oh, sorry. This draft. I really wanted to focus on a good Water Fire Grass Core. So... With Manaphy, we have got our dear friend, Entei, appropriately named Entei Lamo. Um, thanks, Josh. Um, mainly for a couple of reasons, and shout out to um, Carson for helping me with this pick, because I wasn't originally going to go with Entei, I just kind of forgot about it. Um, it gets Extreme Speed, it gets Sacred Fire, it gets Stone Edge, it gets Iron Head, it gets other moves and it, you can go mixed, you can go physical, you can go special, you can go bulky because this means HP stat and defenses. I mean it's HP stats big, it's defenses are also pretty damn respectable. I've got them in front of me. Um what are his defenses? His defenses are 85 and 75 with 115 HP. 100 speed, 115 attack. Choice band sacred fire is is out and 50% to burn is also pretty nice. Pair that alongside Manaphy's Schooled. You don't really have much chance in hell of not getting a burn on uh, anyone. So, this guy can just hit hard. He's bulky. He partners with Manaphy really well. Obviously, resists the grass um, weakness of Manaphy. Uh, not the electric one, obviously, but like you said, or like I said, sorry, this thing is quite bulky because his HP stat is stupidly good. Um, it's just a really nice offensive mon. I haven't used it much before, but seeing people use it, it just guarantees to get you killed. Extreme Speed is a glorious move. Obviously, it's plus two priority, so it beats anything like Aqua Jet from Azumarill, uh, Bullet Punch from Scizor, if you like Super Duper Weak. I know it won't do much to Scizor, but it's chip damage. Um, and other common priority, Mac Punch, Conk Elder, maybe, something like that. I mean, Conk didn't get drafted, but lots of big name, you know, priority moves get out prioritized by extreme speed, and that's one major thing. Now, my original draft, I had, like, priority everywhere. It was glorious. Um, I, I think I only have two months of priority now. Nope, three. Technically three. Two usable ones, though. Um, so, Entei's cool. I'm really looking forward to, um, using Entei. I mean, I think, if I look at my draft, he is one of only two months weak to Stealth Rocks. So, I seem to have a good habit of not uh, of drafting teams that aren't weak to rocks, but are still pretty damn solid. Um, but I mean, I also have things late down the line in the team that can cover his ground weakness. I have obviously have things that can cover his water weakness with Manaphy. Um, a couple of mons further down the line too that can appreciate water type moves. Um, rock. I also have a couple of other mons that can appreciate rock type moves. He synergizes really well. He's an offensive threat, which I'm really looking forward to using. Um, so yeah, that's Entei pretty much. So round four, I really wanted to continue building my offense. Um, and I really wanted a wall breaker. I mean, obviously Manaphy and Entei can do it. Um, Manaphy, you'll probably need to set up to do it. Entei can do it, but not to the extent of this one I've now drafted. Because this guy can go specially offensive, can go physically offensive, has a, an amazing move pool. For some reason, I don't understand how he can use half the moves, but he just can. It's an insane mon, and he's returning from my PPL season 3 team. It is when when my Pokédex decides it wants to uh, do something. Now I've gone all the way back to the main menu. That that's wrong. Um, it is probably one of my favourite Pokémon in League format. I mean, so far a lot of mons are apparently, but um, my little friend here, Nido King. Now Sheer Force, Life Orb without any recoil from Life Orb, oh boy, um, this thing just hits like a truck, and your opponent won't know, I mean, for some reason Nido King seems to be more, um, preferred to be a speci especially offensive mon, which is fine, he has, I think, is it, what is it, is it 92 or 82 special attack, let's have a quick look, oh no, it's 85, 85 special attacks, so they're very much usable when you have Sheer Force and Life Orb to pack, um, People sleep on its physical attack though. 102 with sheer force. Ouch. Poison jab. Um, I mean, admittedly there are less moves, but I mean, Life Orb Earthquake is still going to do a lot. Life Orb Mega Horn is still going to do a lot. Life Orb Sucker Punch is still going to do a lot. Um, 
this thing can hit either side. Obviously, it's round for its special set. Ice Beam, Flamethrower, um, Thunderbolt, Earth Power, Sludge Wave. Um, pretty sure it even gets things like Confusion. Um, it's a real shame it doesn't get Crunch. Like, wh wh why doesn't this thing get Crunch but Nido Queen does? That doesn't make sense. Have you seen his mouth? It looks like a shark's mouth, for God's sake. And, and we can't even get Crunch right. Never mind. Um, this guy, he's... Decently bulky as well. Obviously, Nido Queen is bulkier. He's not terribly slow at 85. I mean, you look at his stats, and he's just all kind of well rounded, I guess, apart from his attack, which is base 102. This thing I just wanted because, you know, I. Fairies. I was anticipating a lot of fairies to be drafted. I don't think in the end too many were, but Fairy is pretty much the top typing for a Pokemon, I think, at this current time. Purely because of how well it matches up. I mean, it's weak to steal and poison. Like, they're not common. Most steel types are uh, defensive. Apart from a couple, of which I have one of them, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and poison types, they're not... I mean, I think the, I saw a tweet saying, like, Krogunk has the highest physical attack for a poison type, except Arceus, which is 106. Like, they're not common. Um, so, I really wanted Nido King to, you know, deal with fairies before anything else good was taken. Plus, Nidoking can also just hit other things incredibly hard, because its coverage is insane. Um, plus, as well as Life Orb, you can run Choice Band. Well, not that you would. You would much, I would much prefer run to run um, Life Orb, just for that little bit less damage, but the freedom to move, move, or change move. Um, you can run it Scarfed, you can run it Expert, Expert belt if you're physical because you might not want the life orb recoil. Um, there's assault vest, I'm pretty sure I bought that once. And because in league you can play around speed tiers, if you know you're going to get outsped by something, you might as well just go full on offense and do a monster admin and run a bit of bulk if you know you can outspeed the slower things. Because it's a wall breaker, lots of walls are slow because they have investment in HP and defense. And naturally, things like I say Skyrim is fast, it's base 70, but. Um, things like uh, what walls are really good, really like Ferrothorn, for example, <laughs> Flamethrower, Fire Punch. Yeah, you can just run max HP, max attack, and just bop it and still be bulky. Um, and something can't switch in on this thing. It really can't, unless it's immune to maybe it's like a Steel type to be immune to a Poison type move. Even then, that's a risky play because you do have Earthquake or Earth Power. Nido King is just glorious. I love this thing. I've talked about this. I mean, it, it stands out the fact that I've talked about this guy the longest out of the four I've picked so far when I picked Entei, Scarry, and Manaphy. Um, I love this thing. I'm really excited to use it again. So, I decided that I, I know I already have a Steel type in Skarmory, and I do also have um, plans to get a Psychic type later on. But I wanted something, I really wanted to try this model out for a while, and I don't see anyone ever use it in League format. Now, everyone knows this guy's pretty good. He's pretty slow, but he's got ways to work around it. And that is Metagross. Basically, because I saw Mega Venusaur, and I was like, shit, I have nothing to take on Mega Venusaur. Um, I, I mean, this guy kind of does. Uh, it's Metagross. Uh, normal Metagross, not Mega Metagross, obviously. This guy is, uh, yeah, he's my hardest hitting physical attacker in, in my draft. Base 135 attack. I think I picked this thing more of, more for the reason that it's in tier 3, and it's just insane. It's got 135 attack, 130 defense, 90 special defense, 95 special attack, so it can go mixed, it can go special. It does get Grass Knot, so obviously you can deal with things like Swampert and Gastrodon. I think, I don't know if either of them even got drafted though. I don't even think Hippowdon got drafted, so I don't know if you'll see it. But um, this guy, he's pretty cool. There's only like his lowest status speed at 70, but he does get Rock Ball and Draw Agility. Um, obviously, he has access to the brilliant move that is Worked Punch. Um, obviously, he has got access to other great moves Stone Edge, Earthquake, um, Meteor Mash. Uh, um, 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 I can't remember if he gets the elemental punches, I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, lots of other cool moves, special moves as well, sidekick, I don't know if I said Zen Head, but um, I haven't got this move pull up in front of me, but it's great, it's a great move pull. He's just an offensive mon, he is just really good. And obviously steel types are pretty damn strong, um, regardless, I mean they got nerfed a bit in Gen 6, when I say nerfed, I think they just made it a bit more balanced. Um, but they're still good types. Um, 
I'm not weak to, well, I think so far out of my three, five drafts, three of them are weak to ground. I do amend that later on in the draft. Um, but he synergizes just really well. Now, I know I have a steel type, but he wasn't. But Skarmory isn't the type of steel type you can deal with a fairy. Um, if there's a fairy that's really getting out of hand, um, I've never set up Toki Kiss or something, you know, Bullet Punch. Toki Kiss can outspeed. Uh, can that outspeed me, the king? I think it would outspeed if I was bad and prepped to let it outspeed me. Um, I'm just trying to think of a fast fairy. Someone drew, uh, drafted Deden, if that's a thing. Um, so, I'm just really happy to, I've got Metagross because I just want to try it out. I think this is more of a trial and error mon. If I had to drop something that I picked up so far, it would be this thing. Um, just to sort of try and synergize my team a bit more. Um, but I'm really looking forward to using this guy. Obviously, like I said, I have the potential on a lot of my mons to go mixed so far. Actually, I think all of them could, like, effectively, if I wanted to catch an opponent off guard, I could bring the opposite to the expected to physical man feed. Probably the least likely out of the lot, especially in Tay. Um, I mean, Nido King, you don't know what you're going to get, but either hurts. And Metagross, yeah. Um, obviously, physical attack is the favoured. And holy crap, I've just realised this thing weighs 1,212.5 pounds. Um, so, that is Metagross. So far, we've got Manaphy, uh, Skarmory, Entei, Nido King, and Metagross. Now, after I drafted Metagross, I think I fully regret uh, picking Metagross when I did. I should have gone and picked my fairy at this point. I did pick a fairy at this point, just not the one I wanted. Um, and I also got sniped to another mon, which all of you guys who are watching this will know that I freaking love in this format. And it was like tier 3, and I was like, I need, I need this thing. Um, I can't remember what order I drafted this in, so I'll go with what I think it was. Um, and if not... These two guys that are next coming up, it was either way around, but they were shortly after each other. Uh, you're not a steel type, my love. You are. Where are you? There you are. We have got Jolteon as our sixth member of the team. Now, I haven't really got much of a U switch core going on, um, but Volt Switch is nice. Electric Immunity, along with Needle King, is nice. Obviously, that helps a lot with Skarmory and with Mana Feet, and with a couple of Mon that are coming up later on in the draft. Um, Volt Absorb is nice, obviously speed. It turns out that my team, while being pretty bulky, is also fast, and hits hard. So, this guy just fits the bill really. I know, you could probably guess that I really wanted Heliolisk. I think Heliolisk got picked about four turns before me, so I got really, really frustrated. And I did look at doing something else, which I wish I had done now, rather than picking Jolteon, and that was Electros, which was a tier 4, which means I could have gone and got Lorgis as a tier 3 in one of my free picks. I mean, this is my second free pick, by the way, but I went with Jolteon in the end. I kind of regret that now, because I don't need the speed, particularly, because I have a decently fast team overall as it is. Um, its move pool obviously isn't as good as Helios. Helios' move pool isn't big, but it has the moves it needs. Hyper Voice, Fox Switch, Thunderbolt, Surf, um, Focus Blast, uh, Grass Knot, Dark Pulse. That's like, they're like the only moves you need. Most of the time you bring in Thunderbolt and Volt Switch anyway, because Electro type is a great type, it only has one resistance? One immunity? Oh well, it's resisted obviously by Electric and Ground is immune. Otherwise it's a pretty safe, oh and Dragon actually, it's a pretty safe move and he can just run coverage to uh, cover everything else, surf for ground types, um, hidden power something, or just hyper voice, you know, for electric types. Staff hyper voice is always underrated on mons, um, especially Helios, Heliolisk who can use it really well. Um, it's better than a lot of hidden powers most of the time, which is why I wanted it, but Jolteon's cool, um, he is actually, well, a lot faster and he has one more special attack than he it won't make much of a difference in the long run. His move pool isn't as good, um, but he still has access to some really cool moves. Um, he has, what has he got? He's got Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, obviously, Shadow Ball, uh, Signal Beam, Yawn. I've just watched Monotui versus Sears and the TBU. No, not the TBU. TBU. Um, where he used Yawn, Raw, uh, Wish, Synchro Noise, Baton Pass. That's a cool one. Um, this guy is, is quite cool actually on paper. I think I'm 
I don't hate Jolteon, I really do like Jolteon. It's just that I was a bit salty where I didn't get Helios. I love Helios. I'm really good at using Helios. It's one of the few ones that I would just happily draft season after season. Two season PPL, it's got over 20 kills for me. That's not bad going for an electric type of 109 base special attack. Um, so, I was a bit gutted that I couldn't draft Helios. Um, but it was the first of... I mean, I only got sniped three times in the whole draft. Which isn't bad, but it did make me have to change my whole draft, apart from one mon, um, no, two mons um, at this point, and I still have five mons to draft. So we've got Jolteon, mainly because I wanted a Electric type. He really does synergize well with um, Skarmory and Manaphy. Um, obviously, because Skarmory's weak to fire as well as Electric, obviously, you can switch into Manaphy. And if you're expecting Electric attack, you have your switch into Nidoking or Jolteon. Plus, actually the speed stat, 130 base speed, means that you will be outspeeding some Scarfers, and if they want to bring a Scarfer, they're going to have to bring a fast one, which can limit their options and help you really team build efficiently. So, that's why I have uh, Jolteon as my next pick. Now, I told you a minute ago that I was really regretting picking Jolteon. I don't regret picking Jolteon, I just regret kind of these next two picks as a whole, because I've realize now there's a better combination I would have preferred it would really work well for my team um, and I've gone back to the main menu again but my round six pick and you know what apart after I, I at the time I thought it was a brilliant idea immediately after I was like I regret this instantly thinking the Skarmory's weak to rocks as well but it's not so it's not too bad as I thought um, we have gone Freymon which on its day used correctly I think is probably gonna be amazing and a steal at uh, tier 4 price. Um, West Fairy, West Fairy. There it is. That is, unfortunately, not Togekiss, Togetic. Now, sticking a Violet on this thing, it is bulky. So bulky. Um, 85 defense, 105 special defense. Only gets 55 HP, but it does get access to Roost and access to Wish, so you can Wish past. The main reason why, I mean, originally I wanted the Roman Teams, and it literally got picked, like, the turn before me. Literally the round before me. I was like, right, I'll get Gardevoir instead, it's fine. Then I realised I couldn't afford Gardevoir, plus I already have two, uh, I already have a Psychic type, and I have a plan for another Psychic type later on. So, couldn't do that anyway. So, the only fairies that were really left that were viable, um, were for Fable, which I couldn't afford, because I couldn't even afford Gardevoir. Um, Florgis, which... I'd already drafted two tier threes, three tier threes, so I couldn't afford it. I mean, I could technically change it now, um, which, to be fair, I might give. To I'm gonna give Togetic a chance because after you know thinking, oh god, this thing's shit. After seeing it's pretty bulky, as long as you can play around knock off, it's gonna take hits, even special hits that are super effective. Like Thunder Aside, I don't know the calcs. I expect Thunder Bolt is about half because my special defense is just fucking through the roof. Um, so, I'm going to give this thing a chance, it might change, but I was looking for his move pool and I was like, this thing gets baton pass, this, this thing gets nasty plot, this thing gets calm monk, I think, it gets all cool, all sorts of cool moves, I'm pretty sure it gets heal well, uh, thunder wave, I didn't even think of it as a cleric until now to be fair, so I'm quite happy that I did get it, but like I said, I originally wanted Romatis, and I love a Romatis. I know it's slow, but it can hit hard-ish. It gets Calm Mind, it gets Trick Room, it gets Thunderbolt, Energy Ball, uh, Psy Shock, Moon Blast. Great coverage. And it's a Fairy. Fairies are good. Its HP stat is brilliant. Uh, for a Wish Passer, it gets a Roma Therapy slash Shield Bell. So I was really upset when that thing got taken, and I swear it better be used this season, because if it's not, it happened to me last season as well. I mean, I got Florgis in the end, which, to me, was actually, I actually prefer that to a Romatis now. I always thought I preferred a Romatis. I mean, I like them both, probably equally. Uh, they both do good jobs. A Romatis can take physical hits better and has more HP, so it's slightly bulkier, I guess, but Florgis, like, base 154 special defense. I mean, it just chews hits. Like, what's a sludge bomb from a non-stab mon? I mean, it does, like, nothing. Um... So, it's a, it's a fairy that I've never really tested. I mean, I love this fan. I love the line of Togepi, Togetic, and Togekiss, by the way. So, I am excited to use it. This thing weighs seven pounds. That's pathetic. Put on some weight, man. I'm gonna call this Mono because he needs to put on weight. I know, wait, he needs to lose weight, doesn't he? 
I, I tried. Um, so I'm really quite excited to use this thing. He's also my second defogger. It's, that is probably one of my few downfalls of this draft, I think. I don't have a rapid spinner, I just have two defoggers. So if I want a hazard stack, I have to accept the fact that I have to clear hazards off my side first, or sacrifice my own hazards for their hazard. But if it came down to it, I would have I would do it. I mean I have plenty I think hang on, how many stealth rockers do I have? Not all of them are, you know, sort of, well, they're, they're all viable stuff, I guess, but less likely. So I've got Nino King, Metagross, this mom, which I haven't said yet, Skarmory, and another mod I haven't announced yet. I have five moms that can use Stealth Rock, which might sound over the top, and that wasn't intentional. Uh, I didn't realise it until, like, after the draft. Actually allows me to really open up some movesets, and people won't know what my Stealth Rock is going to be. I also have access to Spikes on Skarmory. Um, also have access to toxic spikes on Nido King and another mod which I haven't talked about yet. So I think Tokusik might synergize pretty well actually. Um, obviously it's a dragon resist. I do have a dragon further down the line. Um, I'm weak to poison and steel. However, I do have Metagross. That thing synergizes with this really well because I know I'm weak to uh, what am I weak to? Dark, which Tokusik loves dark moves. Uh, ghost, okay, that can hit this thing if it's physical ghost, which doesn't really exist. I don't think Gola and Bayonet maybe. Um, it's fine, we can, we can work something out. I have got another one that can deal with that. Um, fire, it might not like it. It's something I could have out of town, obviously. But I do have another one that can deal with that kind of thing. And um, what else was it? What else was it? Uh, ground, obviously, I'm immune. So, Toxic might actually work out pretty well. I'm just going to have to learn how to use it well. So, I've rambled on about Tokusik a bit too much, haven't I? Right, so, my next mod, I've just got, apart from my Mega, I've now got the draft as, as bulky as I can, and I've only got low tier picks left. I think I have, out of my two free, free tier picks, I have enough two tier four mods, and I have my Mega and my tier five left to pick from uh, in the draft. So, I looked down, and there's one mod which I was absolutely astonished, and shout out to Carson again for helping me here absolutely astonished to realise this thing is tier 5 because it's way better than tier 5 um, and it's in all types, it's only weak to fighting, it's immune to ghost ability is thick fat, I haven't been talking about abilities and things have I? I guess none of them, oh three grace toker tick, that could be fun I guess um, yeah, mill tank, I mean I said that I really like walls that kill themselves, this thing gets milk drink, I've got a blocked up nose again um, it can do a similar role to Togesick in being a cleric with Heal Bell. Um, this thing also gets Thunder Wave. It's also got Sap Sipper, so I can make uh, grass types pretty much useless against it. Um, it's 100 base speed for a wall. I think its defense is like 110. Um, so with Thick Fat, you're taking fire and ice moves like it's nothing. Um, which one is doing it? He has 105 defense, 70 defense. So you could, if you put max investment in special defense, this thing could viably be a special defensive wall, um, especially if you're kind of like trying to counter a fire or ice type with it. Um, also, access to body slam, obviously, which has chance to paralyze. Um, we have got fun the way. Um, pretty sure it also gets like you know the move pool of a good normal type. I, I know against earthquake. Obviously, you get your defense curl rollout combo. Uh, Gen two. Um, it's just a solid mod, and I was really, really shocked to see it was tier 5. I mean, what is it? 80 attack as well, with 100 speed. You could easily run an offensive mill tank with Sap Zipper. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, that's actually just giving me an idea in my head for a, uh, a, a team later on down the line, but we'll, we'll get to that at the time. Um, so, I think mill tank really fits well with my team. Mainly because my mega is weak to ice. Which this thing takes, obviously. Uh, Togetic is weak to ice, which th this thing takes on. Metagross is weak to fire, which this thing takes on. New King is weak to ice, which this thing takes on. Um, did I say Skarmory? Skarmory is weak to fire, which this thing can take on relatively well. It just fits really well with Big Fat. And I almost drafted Kangaskhan over this. Because I drafted in PPL last season. I was like, oh yeah, I reckon this thing can do things, and then didn't ever bring it. Um, so. I really think Mill Tank is a steal as a tier 5 mod. I really don't know why it's there. I really am against the fact it's there, but I'm also thankful that it's there. Um, so that's Mill Tank. 
probably going to play a more defensive role on the team. Might see him quite a few times, actually, which I'm really excited about because I do like Miltank as a Pokemon, um, just not Whitney's. So, I think that was pick number eight. Yeah, pick number eight. So, we've still got three more picks to go. So, at this point, I think only one other team hadn't picked a Mega, so I was like, right, okay, I'm happy I can get the Mega I want. I don't need to pick that now, so I'm going to focus on getting more bulk still. So, um, round nine, I figured I haven't got a Spin Blocker. Uh, something that can sort of go as a mixed wall would be kind of cool. Um, and I, I've wanted to use this mod for quite a while. Um, I just never have got around to using it. And that's Cofagrigus. Now, this thing is bulky, 145 base defense, 105 base special defense, it can also hit hard because it gets a nasty plot, it gets trick room, and it's got base 95 special attack. So shadow ball, it gets access to energy ball, um, what else, I'll say psychic, it not, it's move forward isn't like that expansive, like offensively, so, but it can still do the job, defensively is where it shines. It's only recovery is rest or pain split, which pain split is okay, I guess. Um, but there are you also get the move like uh, Destiny Bond, which you can play around when you do have low HP. This thing gets, I'm pretty sure it gets toxic spikes. Uh, I don't know if it gets normal spikes or not. I am not really too familiar with this thing move set. I just wanted to try it for a long time. Um, it's a ghost. It's immune to fighting, which uh, synergizes well with Mill Tank. Um, it's immune to normal, which to be honest isn't too common. Um, its ability Mummy is brilliant. While it doesn't really benefit itself, obviously it gets rid of any ability, well, most abilities on the other team if you make contact with it. So removing Sheer Force, Soft Bond, um, Magic Guard, um, what else? I, I can't think. But it's got a plethora. I'm actually going to look this up because I feel bad. I know this thing's got fantastic moves. Um, like, its moveset is brilliant. If this thing got... I honestly think this thing is a bit like Bronzong. If this thing and Bronzong got reliable recovery in any sort of way, they would be much higher tiered. Bronzong used to be OU in Gen 4. Um, I mean, if it got... I don't know, recover... Same as this thing. It's it's insane. Oh right, so this yeah, Will O Wisp. Um I mean burns. I've obviously got Sacred Fire and Scald, but a solid Will O Wisp user is nice. Curse, sub curse, I mean it's a thing that might be overlooked a bit when it's ghosts. Especially if this thing I don't know if this thing gets it, but I mean look, cool combo. Um Nightshade can be nice, obviously when you're coming up against mons that's set up, but don't necessarily recover. 50 HP per turn is nice. Disable's cool. Uh Haze for the stat removal. Um, offensively, let's have a look. Um, oh, it gets Calm Mind as well. Toxic, obviously, is great. Psychic, Shadow Ball, um, Energy Ball. What else is there? Infestation is cool too. Trick Room. Dark Pulse. Not that you need Dark Pulse because you have Ghost Stab. Um, nasty Plot. Memento. Heal Block. Fake Tears. Endure. Toxic Spikes. Uh, block. Iron Defense, Knock Off, it's Physical Attack, it's base 50 I think, so not that great. Shockwave, Pain Split, Magic Coat, Trick, Zen Headbutt. It's got a great move pool for what it is. Um, the only thing I really wish it did have is obviously Recovery. But, it's slow so it can benefit from Trick Room. I mean, I haven't really got many mods that can benefit from Trick Room unfortunately because I have quite a fast draft. Um, but, I'm really looking forward to using this guy. I think he's underrated as an offensive mod as well. Base 95 special attack at plus 2 isn't really anything to laugh at. Especially when you're outspeeding everyone with trip them up. So, this guy I'm really looking forward to use, but he probably will be used more defensively. He might be brought offensively a few times, we'll see. Um, but I'm really excited to use this guy. So, after that, uh, I looked at my team. I do have two ground immunities already. Um, and I already have a Psychic type of Let's Grows, but I really wanted something that could be a bulky Psychic. Because bulky Psychics, more often than not, really do deal well with fighting types. Um, and they don't really have much weaknesses, other than obviously Knock Off, which kind of can screw them over, but... Most Psychic, psychic types do get recovery moves, and you can run Cobble Berry with them, so they do take on Dark types pretty well. Um, they're obviously also weak to Bug. 
which isn't common, and Ghost, which typing itself isn't common, but Shadow Ball can be quite common. Excuse me. Bug you don't really see unless it's Mega Horn or Bug Buzz or something being. And that's only normally run on something that has either poor move pool or is actually a bug type. Um, so I decided to get a bulky psychic type and it, there's only one really sort of bulky psychic type you can really buy and pick in tier 4 and that was Mixed Brick. Um, base uh, 80 in HP, 105 in attack, defense, special attack, special defense and 80 in speed? I want to say that's right. Um, 105 defenses with 80 HP is pretty damn good. Mesprit is a really, really cool mod that I have seen. Uh, did you use it? I can't remember. No, he used Uxie. Um, I'm probably triggering him right now. Uh, Shardy is a huge lover of this thing, and I can see why, to be honest. Let me just find its um, therapy page. Sorry, by the way, I'm like dying of a cold over here. Um, it's like leveling up Moose isn't too impressive. It does get Healing Wish, which is a a beautiful move if um, you really do need to save your saving grace from dying, you can obviously heal it up. And the TMs is where this guy shines. Side Shot, Calm Mind, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Psychic, uh, Energy Ball, Charge Beam, Acrobatics, Thunder Wave, Grass Knot, U Turn, uh, Power Up Punch, Dazzling Gleam, Move 2 to Fire, uh, fire Punch, Ice Punch, Iron Tail, Knock Off, um, Recycle can lead to some real functionality. Um, Signal Beam, Skill Swap, Stealth Rock, Thunder Punch, Water Pulse, Zen Headbutt. I mean, he doesn't really have that many. I mean, he has quite a few support moves. In uh, He's got Thunder Wave, Stealth Rocks. Obviously, you can use Rest if you want to um, heal up. Uh, obviously, access to the Weathers. Not that my team really takes Weather that well. It gets access to Light Screen. Oddly enough, it doesn't look like it gets access to Reflect. Um, not on here. Oh no, it does get access to effect, just looking at the wrong bit. So it can be screen setter, which I think is quite underrated to be honest. Psych up is a cool move, I've never had the balls to bring. Um, and trick room access, he's another trick room setter. And to be fair, base 80 speed is probably usable in that. But like I said, 105 attack, defense, special attack, special defense. With 80 HP, and it's not even slow. 80 speed on something that can be bulky is pretty damn good. Offensively, it's not so great, but you can run this thing choice scarf. It's. Um, Sort of. I've also just realised I haven't changed from Kofag Grigas to uh, Mesprit yet. Let me do that. Um, this guy, his move pool is so diverse to the point where you can bring physical or special. Probably more special because that he's got more access to moves. Um, that way, uh, no, not Ghost. No, you're just nothing. I've I've clicked the wrong box. You're, oh wait, I already have M selected. That's useful. Uh, where's Mesprit? Where is Mesprit? Where is Mesprit? There's Mesprit. Um, it's variable move set means that you can go offensive. I've already listed some of the good moves. I mean, it gets the elements of punches, it gets U turn, it gets knock off, it gets in head butt. So you can run a physical one pretty, you know, viably. It gets acrobatics as well. Um, it's a really cool kind of mod, actually, and I've, I never even realized it got acrobatics. That's just an odd move I think it gets. Natural gift as well by level up, which is a move that can be quite hard to get on mods these days because it's a Gen 4 thing. Um, copycat kind of a mean kind of move, but you know. Um, yeah, I think this guy has potential. Uh, Future Sight as well, also a cool move, which people don't really use much, but it can deal a lot of damage. Um, so, yeah, I'm really quite excited to use this thing. I've also realised he weighs 0 0.7 pounds. This guy is light, um, but I'm really excited to use Mesprit. It also might be a bit more bulky than offensive, um, but he's sort of like bulky offense, I guess. He is a bulk, bulky psychic type, he can hopefully deal with some fighting types that don't have knockoff, because that's like a common thing these days, but bulky psychic types tend to do pretty well against a lot of guys, so that was my 10th um, pick, and then the last pick, probably the big name pick, I don't know if the Pokédex will let me show it or not, um, let's just scroll through, because it's not, oh wait, it's not too far away from this bit, really. Um, so, there is one core in particular that people talk about when you draft a mana fee. Um, this guy himself is pretty good. I've never seen him. Sorry, I got locked up again. I've never seen him used in league format, um, so it's kind of an unknown to me. But with one for Mega Sceptile. Now, will it let me show you Mega? It will let me show you Mega Sceptile. We are going to go for Mega Sceptile. Now. This guy's synergy with Manaphy is un freaking believable. Quad resist grass, which Manaphy is weak to. 
immune to electric because of lightning rod, which apparently is weak to. Obviously, Sceptile is four times weak to ice. Oh wait, we have a Manaphy. We also have Metagross. We also have an Entei. We also have a Miltank. You know, if it's physical ice, we can even say we have a Skarmory. So, we cover this guy off pretty well. Now, I, my, my aim is I really want to make this thing shine in the format. And I have got the core. Entei, Manaphy, Mega, Sceptile as my Grass, Water, Fire core. Offensively, that thing is ouch. Especially as Mega, Sceptile's move pool is decent enough. It's, well, it's actually pretty good. To the point where you can run uh, mixed, special, physically offensive. Um... You remember I said I have Nasty Plot and Baton Pass? Yeah. I also have Mega Sceptile, which at pace 145 speed, lots of Scarfers are not going to outspeed. Um, mainly because I think from when I use Mega Alakazam, you have to run like a max speed base 95 Scarf to outspeed that, and that's base 150 speed. So obviously base 145 isn't much more, so I'd say anything at 90 base speed or lower Scarf won't outspeed this thing. People tend to put scarfs on the slower mons because faster mons can outspeed other things, obviously, without it. This guy's really cool. Dragon typing obviously really does benefit him defense wise um, because it now means you're um, neutral to fire. You're, I mean, actually, that's probably the only benefit. You're four times weak to ice, you're actually now weak to fairy. Uh, you're still weak to flying. Uh, water, you quad resist. Yeah, you quad resist water, you're immune to electric. It says you quad resist it here, but you're immune. You're quadding, you're quad resisting grass, four times to ice, weak to fly, weak to bug, weak to dragon, weak to fairy. I mean, fairy, dragon, and bug coverage isn't too common. Even flying coverage isn't common, but, you know, bird spam is a thing. Um, this guy just partners really well with the mons I have. Um, and Swords Dance access at base 110 attack. It's not the best attack, but it's also not laughable at all. Special attack's 145. If that thing, if this thing had a way of boosting its special attack on its own, it would be insane. Um, 145 speed. I mean, you can run agility if you want. Don't know why you'd want to. Um, but this guy, I mean, Giga Drain, Energy Ball, Thunder Punch, Seed Bomb, Outrage, Low Kick, Iron Tail, Focus Punch, Dual Chop, Brain Punch, uh, Brain Punch, Drain Punch, Dragon Pulse, uh, Synthesis. Leech Seed, Leaf Storm, Dragon Breath, not that you'd use it, uh, Bullet Seed maybe, Crunch, Power Up Punch, Grass Knot, X Scissor, Rock Slide, Swords Dance, Bulldoze, Energy Ball, Acrobatics, Acrobatics not so much on Mega I guess, uh, Focus Blast, Low Sweep, Aerial Ace, Rock Tomb, Brick Break, Dig, Earthquake, uh, Dragon Claw, Home Claws, just looking through its actual level up, oh, Leaf Blade, Pursuit, Quick Attack, Night Slash. This guy's moveset is insane. I mean, for what it is, it's it's a really good mon. I've liked, the only time I've ever really used it is in-game. So sort of when Auras first came out. I really do like Sceptile as a mon. And Mega Sceptile looks freaking awesome. Um, and with Manaphy and other things like Entei and Metagross, which pair up with it really well, I am really excited to use this thing. I think that the drafts around it also allow it to do a lot of work. I've started build team building for week one already, and oh boy, this thing, I'm not going to say actually, it, 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 it could have a field day as well, I might say. So watch out guys, Mega Sceptile is coming for you. Obviously like I've said also, Lightning Rod, fantastic ability, does boost its special attack, base 145 plus one is going to be ouch. Especially when I've given you its variable move pool, which it doesn't have access to, so... Yeah, Mega Sceptile I have really high hopes for this season. Obviously, it's not the bulkiest thing, so I do have to be careful with it, but it will also... I feel like it will teach me a lot about how to play Pokemon using this thing, mainly because, you know, it's... It's it's odd. There isn't really a Pokemon like it. Grass Dragon is a unique typing. Um, Lightning Rod on it is just... It seems random, but I guess, I mean, it's a tree, it absorbs electricity, or whatever it's called. Um, it's, it's move pool is pretty unique. I mean, it's just a unique mon. It's fast, special attacker, in that sense, it's not too unique, but it's really cool. So I'm really, really excited to use it. Um, and that's the draft, so I'll quickly list over what they all were again. 
So in tier order, not draft order this time, we've got Manaphy as tier 1, Entei as tier 2, Nino King and Metagross as tier 3, Togetic as tier 4, Miltank as tier 5, Mega Sceptiles by Mega, uh, Skarmory, Jolteon, Crofagrigus, and Mesprit as my free picks. So let me know what you guys think of my team. Actually, hang on, I might, I might just give this little fun fact to it for you because on my tab... I actually, no, that's not accurate because I haven't filled two of them in yet. I was going to give you my average stats. At the moment, my defense is insanely good, apparently, on my team. But everything else is well balanced. So I think, personally, my team is well balanced. I've got a good mixture of hazards, hazard removal, typing, uh, coverage for each other, um, effect moves like, you know, Thunder Wave Toxic. Um, I've got Fire, Water, Grass. Technically, I have Steel Fairy Dragon, although not a bulky variant, so maybe not so much. I've still got my Steel Fairy Core, which themselves, you don't even need a dragon themselves, it's pretty good themselves. Um, I'm really quite happy with my team here. Um, I think originally, after I got Snipe, I was hating it, but sort of look, doing this video and looking at it a bit more in my own time, I've realised what potential this team has. So, I mean, it does not it's not your conventional draft team either. I mean, only a couple of things on here are things you'd expect to see. Um, sort of in a team that does well but I'm really excited to use this team let me know if you guys sort of have any suggestions obviously you might not know the tiering systems so you might suggest something which I in fact just can't do unless I change half my team we get four tran uh, four transfers a season which we can do at any time I believe I'm not too sure um, so I can change things about there is obviously the Togetic Metagross thing I was considering swapping Florges and Electros in for them too Probably shouldn't say that on here because, you know, people might snipe me and shit, but never mind. I am here to have fun, and honestly, obviously, I do want to go and try and win. I've never battled any of these. Um, Juan and RTK for the PPL are in this, but they're in the other division. There's two divisions of eight. Uh, I am on my own. I've never battled anyone in this division. I don't know anyone personally from this division. There are a great bunch of people, though, to talk to you on Discord, you know, so... It's nice getting to know them. It'll also be nice, hopefully, 6 0 them all. I doubt that'll happen because there's some good battlers here. They've been around sort of the LBA for a while. Um, it's quite odd that they do recognise me because of the PPL. That's kind of a funny thing half the time. But it's nice sort of going into a new league, you know, and trying to help them. Well, I'm not I'm not running it in any way, but, you know, just trying to give them tips because three seasons of the PPL, you learn shit. Um, but anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this draft video. Like I said, make sure you leave me a comment on what I can improve maybe on the draft, if you have any suggestions, don't be a complete dick and say your draft is shit jack, and now I know there'll be a Saki comment from like Shroom or Charlie saying your draft shit jack, um, you know, constructive criticism on the draft, what things you like about it, what things you don't like, um, make sure you go and check out the NPCC Twitter like I said before, um, also make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see the battles from this, I mean, it's going to be as good as the PPL, hopefully. Um, I mean, people here, I don't know their battling skills. I think it's a real mix of newbies and um, experienced battlers. So that's another thing. If I can help the new people, I know I'm not the best myself, but I know how to progress in getting better in leagues. Because personally, and I've been told this many times, I am not bad like I used to be. People actually kind of like, oh shit, I have jacked this week. This could be quite tough kind of thing. Not like, you know, right win. <laughs> Shots fine. Um, so, yeah, if I can help teach new people how to do sort of like, you know, little tips and tricks about league play, that'd be cool. So, it'll also help refresh my memory, keep it, because in between the last two PPL seasons, season two and season three, I did like one maybe game, serious game on Showdown. That's probably about it. Otherwise, it was Hackmon. I really rambled, haven't I? I'm going to leave you guys here. Make sure, like I said, like the video if you did enjoy it. If you like my team, obviously let me know. If you think there's something I can improve, let me know as well. Um, stay around for battles. Battles. First battle we've got next Saturday. Um, it's going to be really awkward because we've got to upload them at the same time. They're pretty much all in America, apart from me and Derizzle. Um, otherwise, we get our own time zone thing, so I think we're five hours ahead of the time we're meant to upload. So this is going to be live at... 5 p.m. my time today. I'm doing the Saturday morning. I really regret this now because my throat is shot and my nose is blocked. And like I said, I'm still rambling. So I will see you guys hopefully with a win in week one of the NPCC next Saturday. So I'll see you later. Bye.